So Trevor, you know, Nunez, I'm sure this morning in the cold light of day will realise how much he let his side down. Yeah. Um, what does that come down to? Because there was only going to be one outcome and that was him getting sent off. Yeah. Um, it comes down to a few things. One, he'd missed a chance, a decent chance where he at least should hit the target. But I feel if he hits the target from that... Mo Salah cross he scores because the keeper's out of position, far post. I think so. There's a bit of frustration in there. Um, he's trying too hard. I think he, you know it's his debut at Anfield in the league, and he wants to do well. He wants to do well for the fans. He can feel the energy in the, in the support that he's getting, and he wants to do well. And he's a bit too desperate to do that. And then he gets sucked in. You know, he, I mean, he, he flung his head. I, I was listening earlier um, to, to a few people saying. You know, it, it what he didn't really headbutt him. He walked into him. Well, I, did, of, I didn't think he did. It's a load of, it's a load, absolute load of rubbish. He tried to headbutt him a couple of times with the back of his head. Oh, he, he pushes, just before, his, he pushes no, no, his head into the the, 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 the the passenger play earlier. He tried to kind of catch him a little bit I saw that. prior to that, Anderson. Yeah. And then Anderson plays the game. He, he tells the ref. Plays the, rest, the game. You see that you, you but said he does. It. Plays but this the is, game. This is sport. mortally wounded. This is no, no. He plays the game by getting the referee's attention. Gets him involved, said, listen, he just tried to butt me. As he does that, Darwin Nunes turns around and he kills himself. And not only for that game and with the support, he's got off to a difficult start. He's not scored in his debut at home at Anfield. But not only that, he got sent off. He's shown a real poor discipline to actually get sucked into Anderson like that. And not only that, every other defender now is looking at that thinking, right, when we play against them, if he's starting get into him because he's got a reaction in him and he's got to have to deal with that yeah. now. So See, it's, it's, I think Anderson's a player really impresses me, Simon. I think he's yeah, great. He's a good player, yeah. I, I think he's a really, really good player. But I do feel these guys make the most of it. Um, I mean, if someone headbutts you and you go down, it must have been with some force that you took that guy's head um, in your face. Well, I mean, and I, it wasn't like I, that. I, I, it went far from it, Jim. I, I had no, a fell no, headbutted no. him. Um, We're not talking a Glasgow kiss. No, well, I mean, we can compare the levels of crime, but we can talk about the player's behaviour. It was a sending off offence, right? No, it was, it was, yeah, irrespective yeah, of how, how quickly yeah. or how dramatically the player goes down. My first reaction when I saw it was, what a ridiculous thing to do, and his head busted him in the face, he's going to get sent off. I didn't, I didn't analyse, not because no, he's a Crystal Palace player, or because I've got a vested interest. Simply, it was a reaction from a player for a variety of reasons that probably Trevor has nailed, um, and I think it will be the first and last time he does it. I think you're playing in a dressing room with big players in there. There's some big leaders in that dressing room, mm. Jordan Henderson and a few others that will have something to say about that. James Milner was very um, balanced on his interview after the game, but there are players that have got influence, a manager that doesn't take any nonsense, and I think the player will have his mind concentrated yeah. in the reality of what's involved with playing for Liverpool. That notwithstanding, Liverpool weren't winning that game at that time. They were still losing, um, and so you have to give a lot of... Um, credit to Crystal Palace rather than look at the Liverpool machine as saying well hang on a second it's stuttering they got caught on the first game of the season by a vibrant bouncing Fulham side that can happen on the grass of a bright summer's day of the first game of the season full of vitality they got get caught a bit short and Palace are a difficult side to play against Z Palace decided to play a certain way and Liverpool will find that a lot of teams might set up this way this season against them um, and of course, the way Liverpool play with a high line, you're going to get situations when you've got players like Zaha and players like Ezzy that can get his head up that you're going to have situations like that because Zaha's got one thing, if nothing else besides being a box of tricks, he's got pace. Um, yeah, and I actually yeah. think that with, irrespective of how dominant S Liverpool may have made on too much time in line in the pitch. I, I agree with that too. He could, he should, I think Wilfred should have done better last night holding the ball up a little bit better at times and he should have scored a winner. Yeah. Yeah, as they should have scored as well, one on one. Yep. Could have could have found the finish. I think Phillips struggled, not Phillips. I think that combination, that partnership between right. Phillips and Virgil Van Dijk, doesn't look strong to me. So Gomez to... came on and, and, and showed that up. But oh. I think I think Liverpool were lucky last night because there was a lot of chances created by Palace. They played a four a five four one, played it very well. Every player on that pitch reflected the manager Patrick Vieira. I thought they stood up to be counted in one of the most difficult arenas to play in, Anfield. And not only that... Yeah, but the way I saw it, Trevor, 10 against 11 and Liverpool were still dominating. It doesn't matter about dominating. When you're playing a 5-4-1, you're, 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 you're bringing them on. It's a sucker punch. And then you, you break with uh, and you counter mm. with quality. So, and I thought they did that superbly well last night. And if it wasn't for Diaz and a moment of brilliance from him, Liverpool lose that game. So on this morning, this morning being Tuesday the 16th of August, um, City, your beloved Manchester City, have a four-point advantage over Liverpool. But you cannot surely draw any conclusion there. Well, of course that, you don't. Call. That's it. That could be defining. No, of course you don't draw a conclusion, but you'd rather be Manchester City spot. Team spirit's brilliant. 
everyone believes in the manager's philosophy and the manager's way of playing. Um, the new players have come in, hit the ground running, had an impact. Haaland scored his first Premier League goals. Um, the fans are right behind it. They're buzzing. So you'd rather be in that position than be in Liverpool's position where you've got one point on the board you, you, and you're much. struggling. You've got injuries. You've got your star striker, £85 million, Nunez, who's suspended now for the next three games. You've got injury problems throughout the side. But we shouldn't forget last season, uh, City's 14-point league got clogged. So back. that's why I'm saying it's not conclusive. But... If you had the choice, you'd rather be in Manchester City's position than Liverpool's. I mean, you would have, I mean, uh, uh, dollars for donuts, you would have said at the beginning of the season, Fulham and Crystal Palace, first two games of the season, six points for Liverpool. Yep. Right? Yeah. So by that standards, they haven't hit the straps yet. Let's not get... Let's give, give credit to Fulham and, and Yeah, um, let's not get carried Palace. away ourselves. Liverpool will be a machine. Liverpool will get going. Um, of course, when you lose a player, I mean, uh, they lose, they've lost a player in Mane. They haven't yet replaced him. Nunes will get his strap, will get going. And what he did when he came on against Fulham, uh, when he played against Fulham, I, I thought he was exceptional at times. Mm. He's a proper player and he will be a proper player and Klopp doesn't sign bad players as a rule. Yeah. So Liverpool's machine will start to get going at some point. I like the way Klopp is handling some questions that are thrown at him at the moment. And uh, to be honest, pre-match, he criticised those, Trevor, who have judged Darwin Nunez right, and so. Erling Haaland so early yeah. in their Premier League careers. Absolutely. And uh, he was saying five weeks ago when we started pre-season, Nunez had his first game and it, it didn't look great from the outside world. Not for us, but it was crazy how quickly people decided to judge him. But that's why, and of course, Pep was saying the same thing about Haaland. But that's why he just took a few chances uh, in the was it the um, Community Shield, and it, and Pep was saying, "Are you kidding? Give us time." But that listen again, fundamentals. That's why for football players and clubs collectively, it's important not to believe the noise you read, the noise outside of the club, because we all know in here every striker is going to miss chances. Nunes on another day will score that goal. It'll get Liverpool one all, and all of a sudden Liverpool will get momentum and they'll win that game. Mm. That didn't happen. So, in my opinion, he has replaced Mane. He's gone striker. Uh, Mane was playing striker towards the end of his tenure at Liverpool. I think he's his replacement. He's not quite hit the straps yet, but That's I have no game. doubt that he's a top yeah, he's quality got, he's striker. He's replacement, but he, he is not at the level that no Mane way. departed with. No yeah. way. And actually, I thought it was quite evident last night with, with Liverpool. They were quite blunt in attack. Didn't really work Guetta yeah, yeah. too much. And not only that... But Palace did... But Palace, Thiago Palace, was Palace the, set up well. Tia, of course they did. But, but, Thiago, but if they the killer instinct, should they not have left it's the not, three points? It's, it's not that. Well, You've got Trent Alexander-Arnold and you've got Robertson who had a, an off day. Trent's delivery weren't as good as it usually is, and you had Tiago, who's their most. But what an opportunity! Most, Vier, most Vier, Vier, Vier Vier is not a coward and and plays a, a certain style of football. He recognises the attributes of his team. He knows that the, the danger of Liverpool. He knows that going down to ten men takes away something from Liverpool, but necessarily not their potency going forward. It might take away their defensive cover a little bit because they push Trent Alexander further up the pitch to try and create themselves more opportunity going forward. But I think ultimately he looked at it in the same way that they took Arsenal and beat Arsenal last year and they almost beat Arsenal in the that game at the Emirates when they were 2-1 up and got done in the last minute yeah. um, um, by Lacazette I think there's a situation here where Palace recognise what they are and getting a point at Liverpool is better than perhaps being brave and coming away with a credible performance but no points I, I would have liked to I thought they had chances I thought Wilfred as much as his goal was a brilliant finish yeah, I thought there were opportunities for him <clears> to hold the ball up a little bit better to relieve some of the endless pressure and he should have scored Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.